Hey everybody, I'm JT Wardle. Come on, let's go fly in. Fly, can you fly? Yeah, he's got it. Hey friends, thanks for watching the show. We're glad you're watching. We're gonna tell you a great story here that happened to me the other day. Watch the wing, left and right, let's do it. Launching, clear. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Don't let go of the ace, don't let go of the ace. There we go. the point of that ochres there to the north edge and uh, beautiful so the wind changes obviously the winds coming from different direction on the other side of that but not too bad that was a nice little lift got some lift went around there did some circles saw this cross and I'm like oh look at that huge cross on the point I wonder what it's marking so I get closer and actually it was a power, power line. line with some uh, propane tanks up there yeah power line <laughs> propane tanks went down low went up high cruised along the shoreline ridge here went over there we just talked to somebody and he was Wanting to know if we spotted any turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just us turkeys. Uh, just, two. just two turkeys flying, but no, we didn't see any. Lake Point is on the uh, west side of the Ochre Mountains. And the Ochre Mountains is, I believe, it's a Paiute Indian term, meaning shining mountain. Farnsworth Peak is uh, over 9,000 feet up there, and it's named after Philo T. Farnsworth who was the inventor of the television. And he's a Utah native, born here in Utah, and invented the TV. 1958, a mysterious guest on a TV quiz show had a startling secret. He was Philo T. Farnsworth, and he had invented the first electronic television system. He conceived the idea as a boy of 14 before leaving the family farm in Utah. By age 19, the self-taught young genius had convinced a group of San Francisco bankers to fund his project. By 1928, he was able to transmit a recognizable image. The 22-year-old inventor sent a telegram to his backers declaring, the damn thing works. Farnsworth went on to found larger laboratories and a factory, but in the end he couldn't compete with the financial might and legal firepower of his giant arch rival, RCA. Kept busy defending his patents, Farnsworth could not maintain his early technological edge, and in the late 30s, RCA finally took the lead for good. Got a beautiful flying, and on the way back I saw these towers, these black towers. And when you're flying, you really can't see cables or high power lines very well. You can see the tower, you can see the pole. And I'm getting closer to it because I want to explore and I can't see any cables. And I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking and then it looks like a tram. It looks like a gondola and I'm like, I wonder if there was a ski resort. What is it? Holy smoke. I did not know they had ski lift. It's like there's a ski lift all the way there. Interesting. And I scratched my head and I said, what's the story about these? So I did a little research and I found that out and here's what I found. Here's the story. It's 1952 and there's a new television station started. It's called KSL. They needed to put a transmitter up on the top of a peak and so they found 
the Farnsworth Peak, which was over 9,000 feet. They put their antenna and transmitter and equipment up there. So to put the transmitters up on the top, there's a 12-mile uh, trail or road that they uh, would take all the way up to the top. That's how they built that. And the engineers would have to go all the way up there if there was a power issue or a faulty equipment. And that's in the good weather. When it is winter time and the snow is deep, it would take an engineer with snowshoes all day long to hike up that mountain to uh, fix any problems. Occasionally in the 50s, the TV channel would be out for days. So they began to look around, how can we get up all year round in the winter time? Helicopters in the 1950s didn't have, they weren't very large helicopters and they didn't have the lift to get up to that height and land. Helicopters were out. They decided to look into trams and there was a mining company in Ketchum, Idaho and they purchased the tram from there. So it's in interesting the engineering of this between tower six and seven there is a 30 degree angle turn. You don't see that today. They don't put that much tension or strain on a cable. But back in that day, they decided to make it turn 30 degrees from Tower 6 to Tower 7. The also interesting thing about this tram is between Towers 4 and 5, they had to go across Big Canyon. And they spanned that 5,000 feet across that canyon. And uh, you're about 1,000 feet up off the ground on that gondola. So the tram ran pretty consistent and continuous from 1957 all the way to 1983. There was an incident on the cable and uh, then they continued to use that cable. 1983, the regulations on the cables changed. KSL never had any deaths that we know of caused by the use of that tram, but there was one incident. We'll tell you that story. Hey, here's the uh, story of the incident that happened here. Two FAA technicians were headed up on the tram to do some work in 1962 on the air traffic control transmitter. They made it uh, all the way up about 250 feet from the top. One of the guys looks and he hears a big bang, bang, and the cable comes slashing right towards him. He saw it, his buddy didn't see it. The cable broke, smacked into the carriage, and they dropped all the way down, but did not hit the ground. Apparently it hooked up and was able to swing 50 feet off the ground. Those two uh, men did not die in that incident, but they did have a thrill ride there. A very dangerous thrill ride, dropping. KSL, the owner of the tram, uh, spliced the cable. And that was in 62, so they, they uh, ran that tram for 20 more years on a spliced cable. Apparently, a, a weld uh, gave loose on that 1962 incident, and uh, that caused the men to fall. But they did not uh, die, they just were um, not seriously injured. They would get up there, the train coming past. And get on there and head up. They'd stay nice and low for the first one, two, three, four towers, and then you got to get up. This tram was the world's largest, had the world's largest unsupported span of 5,000 feet. It was a thousand feet longer than the Glen Canyon Bridge. So while this was in operation, it had a world record of 5,000 feet from Tower 4 to Tower 5. And you're a thousand feet above the ground. It would take them about 45 minutes a tram ride up. Uh, there is a story of uh, one technician. It was his first day and they brought him out here and he quit. He said, there's no way. <laughs> he must have been afraid of heights said, I'm not going to go up there, uh, I will die. And they said, yes, you can quit after your shift if you want to get paid. So they made him uh, ride up and he never rode again. This had a little aluminum carriage that would take up and that thing would get tossed around in the canyon winds and the mountain winds that happened here. And they, uh, they would go up there and uh, get bounced around like they were in a little tuna can. Uh, broken ribs, one man broke his back. Uh, 
The uh, tram was in operation for 27 years, from 57, 1957 to 1983 sometime. There's a strange looking high power octopus looking metal iron thing. Take a check of that. Yeah, here it is, the old black towers. They just kind of look like camouflaged spiders four-legged spiders bill was saying he used to take his kids motorcycling around up against the hills there and you uh couldn't get close to those trams could you no no couldn't yeah. get too close but this is kind of neat being able to fly over them now okay you can go see the trams today there are probably uh, five or six of them left they took uh, Tower 7 off, so uh, you, there is no tower at the top anymore. That's a little piece of that television history right there. It used to be part of the KSL tram. We're committed. We're gonna run and flare and flare. We got it. Oh, we go, let me go, let me go. Pull it down, pull it down. There we go. Lovely. There's fast. <laughs> yeah. He's down. Beautiful. Hey friends, thanks for watching. It's time to go. Love, laugh, live. Woo! I think they need an engineering day. We need to celebrate engineering at least one day or a whole month engineering. Think of the technicians, think of what they did, they had to build. And uh, they took their life in their hands. It was a dangerous job to go work on the technology. It was needed. Somebody would have said, hey, we need to get up there. So you can either snowshoe up there or ride the tram. Let's ride the tram.